I can't imagine the pain you must be feeling, losing your only son, Eugene. Now, you're left with four daughters. This drunken driving business took your son, my beloved nephew, away too soon. Yes, Doreen, he was my only son. It's been so hard without him. It's just such a shame, dear, that he passed away so young, despite all his accomplishments. Graduating from the best university in the country, and landing that prestigious job as a senior architect. Please, Doreen, don't remind me. It's still too painful. And then there's the matter of your husband, Barjabulil's illegitimate son. You know how these things go, he might inherit everything, leaving your daughters with so little. As his lawful wife, I'm entitled to at least half of his wealth, and I plan to pass it on to my daughters. Barjabulil will surely divide his assets equally among all his children. But, Thando, have you ever considered that my cousin brother, your husband, Barjabulil, might already be spending a fortune on that other child? Investments, property, who knows? Your daughters might get less than you think. I don't want to think like that, Doreen. I trust my husband. Well, Thando, I have a plan. You should send your youngest daughter Nandi to the most exclusive school in the country, the most expensive one. This way, you ensure that most of your husband's money is spent on your children. Let Nandi live like high society, expensive clothes, credit cards, the whole shebang. She'll also have a better chance of marrying a wealthy man that way, securing her future. But, Doreen, isn't that manipulative? I don't want to play games with my husband. Consider your daughters, Thando. The other woman and child in your husband's life may currently be benefiting from his wealth while he's alive, whereas you are waiting for his demise to access his millions. Seize this opportunity to secure a better life for your children. You deserve it. Hando hesitates briefly but ultimately chooses to implement Aunt Doreen's plan. Her desperation for her daughter's future and her fear of her husband's illegitimate son, who is his only surviving son, outweigh any reservations she may have had. Nandi has gained admission to one of the most prestigious high schools in the country, where she receives top-notch education and abundant opportunities. While at the school, Nandi excels in horse riding, competing in equestrian events and earning accolades. This achievement brings great joy to both her parents and the school, and it paves the way for numerous opportunities in her future. Have you seen our younger sister, Nandi, lately? She thinks she's better than all of us just because she goes to that fancy school. Yeah, it's not fair. We never got the same chances she did. And did you hear? She won another equestrian award. She's making us all look bad. It's like she's trying to outshine us on purpose. What's going on, sisters? It's Nandi, Gugu. She's hogging all the attention and opportunities. Dad even has a son with another woman, and we may not inherit anything from him. It's not fair. <laughs> None of this should be blamed on Nandi. Both of you are inadvertently falling into the devil's trap. Don't allow him to manipulate your thoughts. It's essential to cultivate a mindset that recognizes the goodness in people and work towards building your own wealth rather than relying on the prospect of inheriting dad's assets upon his passing. When you resist the devil's influence, he will eventually flee from you. How dare you say such things to us? We are your older sisters, Gugu. Show us some respect. What's this commotion about? It's about Nandi, Dad. She's been given everything while we're left with nothing. You spend so much on her education, it's not right. I've worked hard to provide for all of you. Nandi's opportunities are not her fault, and I expect you to support her, not tear her down. The family's strife and envy continue to brew, 
with malevolent spirits seemingly fueling the discord. There's unresolved tension among the siblings, highlighting the destructive impact of envy and unresolved family issues. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some exciting news to share today. One of our own, Nandi Ndaba, has been awarded a scholarship to study at one of the top five universities in the world. Thank you so much, everyone. Nandi, that's amazing. You totally deserve it. Thanks. But you know, it's all about hard work and dedication. But don't you think a bit of luck played a role too? Well, maybe a little, but I believe in working for what you want. I put in the effort, and it paid off. Nandi, this is incredible news. We're so proud of you. Thanks, Dad. I worked really hard for this. Always knew you had it in you, but remember to stay humble, dear. I will, Mom. I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Nandy, are you sure about leaving like this? It's a big step. Timmy, you have no idea how much I need to get away from all the fights and drama at home. It's driving me crazy. I understand, but are you sure this is the right way to deal with it? I've tried talking to my family, but it's like they're blind to their own issues. I need some peace and quiet for once. I can't believe Nandy gets to leave while we're stuck here. Yeah, it's not fair. She always gets special treatment. all just be quiet for once. Nandi's father, Bajabulil, doesn't address the situation that's causing a lot of tension in his family. Nandi, please assure me that you'll steer clear of alcohol and discover healthier methods to cope while you're there. I'm aware that your parents and siblings indulge in alcohol every evening, and you've recently begun following the drinking patterns. Recall what occurred with your brother, Eugene. He battled alcohol addiction and tragically lost his life at a young age in a drunken driving accident involving a train collision. I'm genuinely concerned for your well-being and hope to prevent any harm stemming from alcohol abuse. You're right, Toomey. I can't let myself go down that path. I'll make better choices. Nandy, take care of yourself, okay? I will, Mom. I hope things get better at home. I'm sorry for the way things have been, Nandy. We'll miss you. I hope you all find peace and happiness too. A few years later. Nandy, you've accomplished so much academically. What made you question your forefathers' beliefs and adopt Christianity? I saw the world, Alex. I met people from all walks of life and realized there was more to faith than what I grew up with. But, honestly, I've struggled to truly follow the path of Christianity. What do you mean? I spent years in a place where casual relationships were the norm. It was easy to get caught up in that lifestyle, and my drinking habits worsened. It's tough being in a new place, especially when you're young and vulnerable. But what about the rehab and the arrests? How did that happen? I was under a lot of pressure at university, and I just wanted to fit in with the crowd. I made some really bad decisions and ended up in rehab. Then, I got arrested for petty crimes while under the influence. It was a dark time. Nandi, I'm here for you. It's never too late to turn things around. Thank you, Alex. I've learned some hard lessons, and I'm determined to make better choices moving forward. 
Nandy, I'm really worried about you. Your drinking has been getting out of control. I can handle it, Sarah. It's just a way to cope with stress. Besides, it helps me speak my mind. But Nandy, it's not healthy, and it's causing you to do things you might regret. Flashback. Nandi at a corporate event, holding a glass of alcohol. You know what, Charles? Your management style is terrible, and I've had enough. See, situations like that can jeopardize your career. I know, but I can't help it. The more I climb the corporate ladder, the more I drink and rely on antidepressants to cope. Nandi, it's not too late to seek help and make changes. Time passes, and Nandi becomes a mother to a set of twins, children born out of wedlock. Nandi, we thought you'd make better choices in life. I know, Dad. I've let everyone down, including myself. Despite her career's success, Nandi's battle with alcoholism and poor decisions have taken a toll on her personal life, leaving her in a state of regret and disappointment. Nandi, you're now the CEO of this global bank. You climbed the corporate ladder remarkably fast. It's impressive. Thanks, Mark. I've worked hard for it, and I have powerful connections. What about your faith? You used to be quite religious. Oh, that was a long time ago. I don't spend time in religious stuff anymore. My success is all about my efforts and connections. As the years go by, Nandi's pride in her achievements grows, and she becomes increasingly distant from her faith and family. I've made it to the top because of my hard work and dedication. I didn't need any divine help. You're absolutely right, Nandi. You're a self-made success story. As Nandi receives more accolades and recognition for her accomplishments, her sense of self-sufficiency only intensifies. The Lord wouldn't approve of my carefree lifestyle anyway. I'm better off without him. Over time, Nandi's once strong faith becomes a distant memory as she attributes all her success to her own abilities and powerful connections, drifting further away from God. Nandi surrounded herself with accomplished individuals who did not share her faith, and she eventually adopted their beliefs and lifestyle. Be selective in your choice of friends. Concentrate on your spiritual journey rather than solely on earthly matters. Keep in mind that everything we engage in either contributes to the growth of God's kingdom or furthers the influence of darkness. There is no middle ground. Do not allow your present achievements or difficulties to distance you from your faith in God. Have you seen the things Nandi posts online? It's getting out of hand. I'm afraid she's losing touch with reality. It's not like the daughter we once knew. I think she posts some of those things while high or drunk. I think all of us should visit her overseas. If she can't come to us then we'll go to her. Yes. Meanwhile, Nandi's sisters, Tandy and Zinhil, discuss their concerns. Nandi thinks she's so perfect, but she's making a mess of her life. We should tell mom and dad about all her bad decisions. Maybe that will humble her. A few months later, Nandi confronts her parents after their advice about settling down and reducing her alcohol consumption. I can't believe you're trying to control my life. I don't need marriage, and I don't need to slow down on anything. We're just worried about you, Nandi. We want what's best for you. You can't go on living your life the way you do. You forget that whatever you do reflects on us as well. All of your older sisters had their children in marriage, why should your case be different? You know what, I'm done with all of you. I don't need your advice, I don't need anything from you. If I embarrass you all so much then I think that maybe we should break all familial ties. No Nandi, it has not come to that. 
Nandi starts cutting off ties with her family, leaving them shocked and hurt. Nandi, how could you verbally abuse mom and dad? They've sacrificed so much for you. You've become so arrogant, Nandi. You've forgotten where you came from. I am now an adult. I don't report to anyone. It was mom and dad's duty to take care of me. I've worked hard for my success, and I deserve respect. Remember that you're in my penthouse and I can kick you out of here any second from now. You think you're better than all of us. We're tired of your attitude, Nandi. The negative emotions intensify, invoking anger, hatred, and jealousy. I don't need any of you. I've made it on my own. Maybe it's time we all went our separate ways. Driven by intense anger and resentment, the siblings face a tough choice. They opt to completely cut off all family connections. In doing so, they unwittingly play into the adversary's scheme, as one of his objectives is to dismantle the family unit. Keep in mind the saying, united we stand, divided we fall. Breaking all familial ties might be the only solution. Yes. In the end, the family, torn apart by anger and jealousy, decides to part ways, each seeking their own path. However, the Jabulil decides to convene a family meeting before his other daughters break ties with him as well. You know, I've noticed we all stick to the same friends for years. It's like we're in a bubble, and we hardly meet new people, highly accomplished people who are genuine believers. And we rarely read self-development books or explore new ideas. We're stuck in our comfort zones. Yes, we keep circulating the same ideas over and over again. We never really discussed matters related to generational curses or spiritual deliverance. Maybe we should have been more open to different perspectives especially from our Christian community. We could have even read books by renowned Christian authors and attended seminars, outreach programs and so forth. Yes, I think we also need to start spending more time praying and reading the Bible. All I know is that my daughter, Nandi, must surely return to me. If not to me, I pray that by all means, she returns to the Lord Jesus Christ one day. If she had truly known the Lord Jesus Christ and had been receptive to experiencing his profound love for her, she wouldn't have forsaken him. In my opinion, Nandi never established an authentic relationship with the Lord, she never devoted time to him or truly understood him. She believed herself to be a Christian, but in reality, she was not. You shall know them by their fruits. <clears throat> Success held greater importance to her than anything else, and she forged her own path in life. It may require a tragic event in her life to prompt a change in direction. One certainty is that, without God's assistance, breaking free from the grip of the enemy will prove difficult for her. All we can do is keep her in our prayers. The family is starting to understand the significance of expanding their perspectives and pursuing knowledge beyond their current circles. Nevertheless, they must exercise caution in selecting their friends, the literature they read, and the individuals they permit to shape their lives. Keep in mind that associating with foolish companions can lead one astray, while walking with the wise can lead to wisdom. Pray that the Lord guides the right individuals, destiny helpers, great minds, and genuine Christians worth emulating, into your life. If you seek, you will find, and if you ask, it shall be given to you. In a world filled with challenges and uncertainties, it is the duty of every Christian to shine the light of hope. Reach out to those around you, for the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Visit orphanages, where young hearts yearn for love and guidance. Share the gospel, and let them know about the Lord's boundless love and care. Enter the prisons where souls are confined, and let them hear of God's forgiveness and redemption be a beacon of hope to those who have lost their way. 
Spend time with the elderly, whose wisdom and experiences deserve recognition. Show them kindness and love, and share the comforting words of the Lord. Remember, many are lost and unaware of the transformative power of the Lord Jesus. Share with them the stories of how faith can turn everything around for their good. Spread the good news and tell of the great plans that the Lord has for all his children. Inspire faith and hope in those who have yet to find their way. As you embark on this mission, stay consistent in your efforts and trust God to touch and change lives. Play your part, and remember that the rest is in God's capable hands. A few years later. Nandi, is that really you? What a pleasant surprise. Aunt Doreen, it's been a while. I'm here on business. I'll be leaving soon. Aunt Doreen thinks to herself, contemplating her strategy. Nandi, I've heard things about your family. They can be so judgmental and jealous of your success. You have no idea, Aunt Doreen. They just don't understand me. You know, your parents were wrong to call out your sins. We're all sinners in some way. Even your dad, he has that illegitimate son of his. How did you? I know everything that happens in the entire family, Nandi. News travels fast. Anyway, I'm just saying, sometimes family can be so quick to judge. Nandi contemplates Aunt Doreen's words, and aware of her hidden intentions. Nandi, as your aunt, I want you to know that I'm here for you. I can be both a mother and a father to you if you need it. You think I don't see through your plan, Aunt Doreen? Why would an independent woman like me need someone unqualified, lower middle class, old, and uneducated like you meddling in my life? What? Nandi, I just wanted to offer support. The day I cut ties with my immediate family, I cut ties with the rest of the family too. It's people like you, with all this nonsense, that I want nothing to do with. Well, how about you lend me some money for lunch? I'm a bit short at the moment. <laughs> of course, Aunt Doreen. You don't care about anyone but yourself, do you? This is why your children have abandoned you. Goodbye, Aunt. I'm out of here. Nandi walks away, leaving Aunt Doreen embarrassed and shocked. I hope no one I know witnessed what just happened. She's gone. I didn't even get any foreign currency from her. Surely, this girl thinks too highly of herself. She dared to look down on me. No one can embarrass me like that and get away with it. Promise, see previous episode, was the great-granddaughter of both Ashanti and Becca Isais. The other two great-granddaughters, in this category, belong to Nozamo's lineage. It's worth noting that Ashanti, a polytheist foreigner, embraced her husband Becca Isais as gods and never embraced Christianity and her descendant, Promise, found herself engulfed in evil realms. On the other hand, Nozamo had a foot in Christianity while also maintaining some heathen practices. Nandi, the focus of this story, and Nozamo's great-granddaughter, falls somewhere in between, not entirely virtuous nor entirely depraved. Her decisions hold a 50-50 chance of either contributing to the promotion of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness, depending on the choices she makes. Nandi's life's journey appears to be one of achieving external success while battling inner turmoil. While her upbringing and education opened doors for her, her personal beliefs and choices led to a complex life. It's evident that she grappled with personal demons and sought solace and substances in relationships. This serves as a reminder that outward success doesn't always mirror one's inner emotional state. It's crucial for individuals to pursue inner peace and spiritual fulfillment, regardless of their material accomplishments. Generational spirits of anger, jealousy, and envy wreaked havoc within Nandi's family. These spirits operated in two harmful ways, 
they strained relationships within the family, leading to the formation of two opposing factions, and they inflicted considerable pain and anger upon Nandi, gradually isolating her from her family. If left unchecked, or if those affected by these spirits aren't delivered from their influence, it can result in the breakdown of the family unit. Some individuals or children may even become destitute, unwilling to return home due to unforgiveness, resentment, and hatred toward their families, instead choosing to endure hardships outside the family during times of crisis. We are not advocating a return to toxic, dangerous, or abusive family situations, but rather encouraging individuals to seek help from healthcare professionals, trusted extended family members, and even trusted church members during life's challenging moments. Most importantly, seeking guidance from the Lord is essential. Sometimes, pride, hatred, unforgiveness, and resentment can lead one to prefer life on the streets or really on unhealthy coping mechanisms, even when they have a home to return to. It's crucial to practice forgiveness and let go of grudges in our relationships, turning to the Lord for guidance instead. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Threads of Destiny. Watch out for the next episode. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we encourage you to do so, ensuring you receive notifications whenever we release new content. As we wrap up, we'd like to offer you these verses, from the King James Version of the Holy Bible, for contemplation. John 15, 1-3 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that bareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. John 15, 4-5 says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. John 15, 6-7 says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. Then men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. John 15, 8 to 10 says, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you, continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. John 15 11 to 14 says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. John 15 15 to 16 says, Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. John 15 17-19 says, These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. John 15 20-22 says, Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. John 15 23-24 says, He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. 
John 15, 25 to 27 says, But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.